Hey people, I want to bring some light on the situation. When I was a kid, in the summer, my mama would have me go out and pick the figs in the morning before the birds got them. You had to go get the ripe ones because the birds would be there and eat them all up. And although I wasn't allergic to poison ivy or poison oak or sumac, none of that ever bothered me. These fig leaves would give me itching pretty bad. I'm no dermatologist, and so I'm liable to mispronounce some of these words. But it causes a phytophotodermatitis, a condition which is caused by contact with some plants containing the furacuamarins. And this in the sap of a fig tree are the main cause of its irritability. And the fig tree also called the, the ficus cara. And the fig is one of the plants that may cause this reaction. And so I never caught this when I was younger. I had to get older before I thought about it. In Genesis 3, 7, you know, and after they ate of the tree of knowledge, you know, the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. I'm sure they put this in there because back in the day, everybody had fig trees and everybody knew that you don't make a jock strap out of a fig leaf. Throughout history, kings and popes have burned banned books and burned entire libraries trying to keep information down and you can find a whole list of these banned books that have been banned just since the 1960s and a lot of these books if you read them you won't be able to figure out why they a judge would be able to ban them and since i've been reading the ancient Hebrew and the ancient Greek, I figured out why they're coming after Dr. Seuss now. And it seems that it's a crime to make words rhyme. It's the poetry they're after. But this is an old book called Horace Lyricus, poems chiefly of the lyric kind. And it was printed in 1560, 17, 50, in 1578 and this was on the banned books list for a long time and uh, a very intelligent writer and you'll find his poetry through here and some of it's in Latin some of it's in ancient Hebrew and some of it's in ancient Greek he was very knowledgeable about all language and you can see here in the first couple pages of the preface that he goes on to tell of why his book was banned before he knew it but but he's talking about the Bible and religion and its purpose and he says that some of the later poets of the pagan world have debased this divine gift and many of the writers of his first rank in this our age of national Christians have to their eternal shame surpassed the vilest of the Gentiles they have not only disrobed religion of all her ornaments and verse but have employed their pens in pious mischief to deform her native beauty and defile her honors. They have exposed her most sacred character to drollery and dressed her up in a most vile and ridiculous disguise for the scorn of the rudder of the herd of mankind. You know, he, he said it's for the main purpose of creating the sheep. And if you go to read this, uh, this old English poetry in here, it'll give you a better idea of how to read the ancient Hebrew and ancient Greek. A lot of the same words used there and the same types of, of poetry. It talks about some of the same subjects and, uh, and kind of shows off of what the ancient gods were all about in, the, in what's on earth, the trees and how they're associated with the stars and time. You know, he has a poem called The God of Thunder. But he was a highly intelligent man. You can see that he was skilled and he wrote uh, in Latin also, he wrote poems. But anything you see in there that's in the ancient Greek or in the ancient Hebrew, it's just, it's just something he copied. Nobody writes in this. It takes gods to write this language. It's, it's geniuses that put this together. 
But the main thing they don't want you to know is his poetry. The entire Bible rhymes and raps throughout. You know, to be surely dead, you are, you are mooty moot. Moody mootin'. And every line in the Bible will be like that. Everything doubles up. It raps continuously. But I was reading in King James and I got to chapter 11 when I figured out that, you know, one language was such a problem for God. And the way they explained God to me, he's all powerful and all controlling. And nothing happens without God anyway. How could one language be such a problem? If we didn't have cell phones and televisions and printing presses, what was the great problem here? And the problem was, that's when I figured out that we had the book and before the language change. And so the language change was after the book was written. And so we don't know when the language change was in there. It's been changed. And so I've just started studying this Hebrew to try to make some sense out of it. And I've been at it for several years, and now I'm getting fairly skilled with the ancient Greek. So I was making this short video for a bonfire t-shirt campaign, and uh, put this picture of Adam and Eve on the front, and I tried to get them to get rid of that white border, and put a don't feed me that shit on the back, because I've picked figs. You're not going to tell me that they made the jock strap out of fig leaves. And I thought it'd just be enough, you know, somebody might want to wear that. Just to get somebody to ask what it's all about. Because people don't pick figs nowadays. You know, they don't understand that that's the page that was supposed to wake you up. But this is where your word amphigory comes from. You know, a piece of nonsensical writing in verse. Prose. You know, they're going to tell you this amphigory has come from the French amphigory of, no, of unknown origin. That's because everything that comes out of the Hebrew, they're going to tell you it's unknown. They don't want you to know where these words come from. And pemphigus, any of several acute and chronic skin disease characterized by groups of itching blisters. And your word figuratively, you know, metaphorical. And figment, something invented, made up, fabricated. And so I'll try to figure out how to put these uh, under my YouTube videos. They'll be in several styles and several colors. And I'll talk to them tomorrow and see if they can do something about removing this white border. And if you're watching this on the bonfire link, this is where all the proceeds go to on my YouTube channel where I read uh, the Hebrew and the Greek Bible and other ancient writings that I find and show how the ancient language is more Teutonic and not Hebrew. Hebrew is a word meaning, you know, the brew, the covey of witches. And so you can learn all about the ancient language on my channel called Strictly Educational Magic. Magic with a CK. It's only get about 10% off the shirts. So if you just want to donate to the channel, you can hit this PayPal button on my channel. And it'll bring you to the first hill construction. And that's where I make my other funds to keep this going on. Don't forget. Hurry, 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 hurry. I won't forget. Alright, I'm going to cut this off here. Good day.